Hey guys, this is Mrs. Butcher, and this video is on systems of linear inequalities. And we're going to graph these systems. Um, so really, uh, you know everything you need to know to do this because you already know how to graph a line. We're going to graph two lines. Um, they're inequalities, so you know how to do the solid or dashed, and you know how to shade up or down. So we're going to be graphing lines and then shading the parts that correspond to the systems. And so I'm just going to do a bunch of examples. Our first, uh, first one here says y is greater than negative 2x minus 5, and then y is less than or equal to x plus 3. So now let's graph just the first line. We have y is greater than negative 2x minus 5. So first I'm going to look at this symbol, greater than. That tells me that we're going to be shading up, and we're going to graph it with a dashed line because it's not equal to. So the y-intercept is negative 5, the slope is negative 2, we're going to plot that line with a dashed line. And we're going to shade up. So I'm just going to put some little up arrows, but I'm not going to actually shade yet. Because I know I want to shade above this, but it's not completely all we're going to shade yet. All right, now we're going to do the second line. y is less than or equal to x plus 3. Less than or equal to tells me we're shading down, and it will be a solid line. So the y-intercept is 3. The slope is 1, so we're going to connect that with a solid line. Use a ruler. I can't use a ruler on my iPad. And we'll be shading down. So the final shaded area is going to be the part that is overlapping by both. Um, and that would be just this area over here. So we're going to shade this area over here. Some people like to shade a little bit of both and then darken the overlap, but that gets too confusing. Only shade the, uh, the resulting area. So this is what we have. This is called an unbounded area. I could shade forever if I wanted to. But of course, that wouldn't make sense. All right, let's look at the second one. Now we have 2x plus 3y is less than 6. So you could rearrange this to slope-intercept form to graph it, or you could just do um, your intercepts I know that this is a positive y and it's less than, so if I did rearrange it, I wouldn't be switching my sign. y is less than goes down, and it's going to be a dashed line. Um, my, if x is 0, my y will be 2. If y is 0, my x will be 3. And then I'm going to connect those with a dashed line. And I would be shading down from there, so I'm going to put little down arrows, but not shade yet. You don't have to put the down arrows. You can remember in your head if you want to. I just find it helpful. All right, now the second line is in slope-intercept, so our intercept is 4. Our slope is negative 2 thirds. So we'll dash that line in. And if you notice, it is parallel to the other line. And we want greater than or equal to, sorry, so not dashed, greater than or equal to, solid line. Remember the arrows on the ends. And then greater than goes up, so above this one. So how can you shade the overlapping area if these lines are parallel and we want less than the yellow line and above the orange line? And the answer is you can't. So this is an example of no solution. Here's another example. This time we're going to do y is less than or equal to 3. That's actually pretty easy because y equals 3 is a horizontal line. We're going to draw it solid because it has the equal to on it, and we're going to shade down. So a solid line through y equals 3. Put arrows on the ends because it does keep going. And then we will shade down below this one. All right, now the other one, y is greater than the absolute value of x plus 4. So this is going to be a dashed line because it's not equal to. Y is greater than goes up. And then we have to remember how to do an absolute value. Absolute value always makes a V. And this plus 4 on the inside means it's going to be shifted to the left 4 units. Slope is still 1. So we have, and it's dashed, we have this and this. And we want to shade above that. So what part overlaps is this little triangle right here, and that's it. 
and it is bounded because it has um, edges all, all the way around it. So this is called a bounded region. All right, let's do a couple more of these. Uh, now we've got more than two lines, and that's fine. We can have as many as we want. So for this line, x is less than 3. x equals 3 is a vertical line less than would be, since it's x is less than, it's tricky. You have to think, okay, it's a dashed line, and then it's going to the left. So we're going to shade everything to the left of this one. And then y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So that's a solid line. y is negative 2 is down here. And greater than or equal to would be above it. Okay. And y is less than x plus 1. So that one has a y-intercept of 1, a slope of 1, and it's a dashed line. arrows on the end, and less than goes down. So the final overlap here is this triangle. Right there. And finally on number five, I have x is less than or equal to four, so solid line less than goes to the left. x is four is here. and we'll be shading to the left. Okay, x is greater than or equal to negative 2, so solid line at x is negative 2. Greater than goes to the right. All right, so we're between these two lines. 3x plus 2y is less than 6, so we've got a positive 2y is less than 6. It's going to be a dashed line, and we're going to shade down. So my x-intercept, when, uh, when y is 0, x is 2, and when x is 0, y is 3, we will dash that in, and shade below it, and then we have 6x plus 4y is greater than negative 12. So it's a positive 4y is greater than, it's going to be dashed, and we're going to shade up. Our, um, when x is 0, y is negative 3. When y is 0, x is negative 2. So if you notice, they have the same slope. The brown one and the yellow one are parallel, and we're going to shade above this one. So we are bounded now by this region here. It's kind of messy with the, with the iPad. Looks a little better when you use a pencil and some rulers, or a ruler, excuse me. All right, so there you go. That's how we graph our linear inequalities. Now I'm going to throw one at you that's a word problem. This says you can work at most 20 hours next week. You need to earn at least $92 to cover your weekly expenses. Your dog walking job pays $7.50 per hour typo, and your job as a car wash attendant pays $6 per hour. Write a system of linear inequalities to model this situation. All right, we need two equations. So let's come up with some variables. Remember what we talked about in yesterday's lesson, we need to define x and y, or whatever letters you want. But we are looking for, um, we are looking for how many hours we want to walk, how we want to work. So X would be dog walking hours, and Y can be our car washing hours. So now let's reread what this says. You can work at most 20 hours next week. So if I put my dog walking hours plus my car washing hours together, I can do at most 20. At most is going to be an inequality less than or equal to. I could do 19 hours, I could do 18, I could do 20, but 20 is the most. So x plus y is less than or equal to 20. Then it says you need to earn at least $92. So if I took my dog walking hours and multiplied it by my dog walking 
um, salary here or hourly rate, 7.5x. That's how much money I would get paid to walk dogs. Plus, and then the car washing pays $6, so 6y. $6 times all your car washing hours. So that's all your money. You want to earn at least, so that's going to be a greater than or equal to. You'd be happy with more than 92, but you have to have at least $92. So here's your system of equations. I didn't say to graph it, so I just said to write it. We've written it. We're done with this problem. Yay. Now, of course, if I did ask you to graph it, you could because we just practiced doing that. And then the shaded area would give you all the combinations of dog walking hours and car washing hours that you could do um, and, and meet your weekly expenses. All right, now I'm giving you the shaded regions and you have to write the system. So remember, we're going to have multiple equations. Um, we'll just put a bracket with them. This one, you can tell we have one, two, three, four lines. They're all solid. So let's just start with this one right here. That's a horizontal line. That's y equals three. But it's not equals. It's shaded below. So it's less than or equal to. Y is less than or equal to three. This one down here, y equals negative two, shaded above it would be y is greater than or equal to negative 2. This one on the left over here is x equals negative 3. It's all to the right, so x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And this one here, x equals 4. We're shading to the left, so x is less than or equal to 4. And there's your system of linear inequalities. This one over here is just a little bit harder because we have to actually figure out the slope of a couple of lines. So let's do the two easy ones first. We've got this vertical line, which is going to be x, and then it's to the right, so greater than or equal to, and that x value is negative 2. We have this one, which is going to be x. It's to the left, so less than or equal to, and that's positive 2. And then we have to figure out this one. You know two points on the line, so you can figure out the slope. You know you're at negative 2, 2, and you're at 2, 4. So here your slope is up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. So this is going to be y. It's below it, so less than or equal to. The slope is 1 half x plus our y-intercept is 3. Y is less than or equal to solid and below 1 half X plus 3. And then this one, in this particular drawing, looks like our slope is the opposite of the other one, negative 1 half. So we're going to put Y. Now this time we're shading above it, so greater than or equal to uh, negative 1 half X. And then this intercept is minus 3. So there's our system of equations for this one. Be careful when you're doing the ones like this that you actually count your slope from points that you are given for sure. Don't just guess because that'll get you sometimes. All right, here's your joke. Y'all have a good night.